And welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't wait to share with you somebody that I've been following on LinkedIn for quite some time. She is like an A-list in the multifamily industry. We'll talk about more with that later. You may see that later. But guys, y'all give it up. Get your popcorn ready for Stephanie Ayler. <laughs> Hello. Ste thank you, Gary. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. You know, I've been a fan of yours. I've been following you on LinkedIn for quite some time. So to have you on the show, I'm just, I'm super excited. And I, I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, sure. So um, my name, like you said, is Stephanie Ayler. <laughs> that's my, that's my new name, actually. Gary, I love it. Just, just uh, did that for me. So thank you, Gary. <laughs> I have also been following you for a while and I'm digging into your first, I think it's your first book, the one behind you. And then you have a second book coming out, which I'm very excited to pre-order here soon. And I bought your daughter's book, by the way. So Thank a little you. plug for Gary. <laughs> <laughs> so that actually tells you a little bit about me. I love to support the people in my life, in my network. Like I am not, I would never be where I'm at. I would never be who I am without the amazing people. I'm so blessed. I feel uh, just really strongly about how amazing this industry is and how blessed and fortunate I am to be a part of it. So I have a whole thing and it might even come back again in my final thoughts, but it's that we're more than one thing, right? Ooh. So I'm a big fan of, you know, when I network and when I'm talking to people, finding out what they're proud of, what the, what's inspiring them lately before I ask them what they do, because, you know, sometimes you're laid off. Sometimes you become hilariously unemployed, you know, to plug my other friends, uh, podcasts, but you know, and, and then, and then you're stuck in this situation where you're like, well, well, what do I do? I do a lot of things. I'm a lot of people. So to answer your question, I am uh, a high energy leader. I love to be around people, but I also need, I'm an introvert sometimes too. I know it's hard to believe. So I take my books and I read my books and that helps me recharge. And I'm a mother of three daughters that have a big personality. <laughs> I don't know where that happened or how that happened. And I am currently running, um, I re-ramped up my company called Savvy Leasing and, you know, maybe uh, break the story here. I'm actually going to rebrand it as Savvy Leading Woo! because I've realized that as I've, all, over the years, while I was really focused on sales training and, and coaching uh, and mentorship, I really want to branch into more kind of leadership accountability training and things like that as well. So there'll be a rebrand here soon. And um, last about me, but certainly not least, um, I do love to be on stage and get a microphone in my hand <laughs> in, case, in case you didn't know. So this is not quite an honor for me. Thank you. That's awesome. I, you know, I just, again, I'm just, I'm excited to have you on the show. Cause like I said, I've been following you for, for quite some time and you just, you really do have that, uh, je ne sais quoi, just that extra to, to really bring and inspire other people. So, you know, for me, I love to connect with inspiring leaders like you, Stephanie, peek behind the curtain and figure out what inspires these inspiring leaders. Yes. And so I reached out to you, I asked you, I was like, what are the, what are the things that inspire you, Stephanie? You brought back three incredible points and I can't wait to get to this first one because this one is so unique that in over a hundred episodes that I've done, no one's ever brought this up. And so you shared with me, Stephanie, your 90 year old grandpa yes. is one of your inspirations. You got to share, is. you got to share this. I love this. <laughs> He is. I'm getting chills even thinking about it. So this is my paternal grandfather. Um, he's 90 years old. And we actually just lost my grandmother about a year ago. And they and then he ended up having to sell their house because it just didn't work out for him to be home alone. He's not a, a, a loner. He loves being around people. So he moved into a uh, retirement facility and he's one of the older people there, but he walks around, he drives still, he'll still go to the VFW to play cards and bingo and anything else that's like got some money attached to it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and have a beer with his buddies. And, and he was telling me, I, I 
uh, my 11 year old daughter and I had the opportunity to go out this summer. He lives in Ohio and we were just sitting around at a, you know, a cookout like we have in Ohio, like I, my whole life growing up. And he was like, yeah, he goes, he's like, I'm probably 20 years older than some of these people in this place. And he said, he's like, I just feel the same inside other than the aches and pains and the things that come with age that I did when, when he was in his twenties. He's like, I, I still want to go hang out with people. I still want to play games. I want to have a beer. I want, I, like, I want to see my family. I want to have a cookout. And, and he just, it, it's, it's so inspiring to me to see him moving around and doing all that. Cause like he, he could have chosen not to, he could, he could choose not to do those things. You know, he could choose to sort of just let time and gravity and all those things impact him. And, and while they are, he's still pushing through and it is, <laughs> he is, his, he's also hysterical. Like he is the <laughs> funny, he's the funniest guy. He, um, he was, he served in the, in the Korean war. So he is a veteran of the Korean war. And, um, but his stories are mostly about like, when we would go to, you know, see the Easter bunny and different things like that. And he would talk about us, you know, my sister and I, when we were little girls and just, you know, sharing funny stories about things that we did, you know, breaking stuff in the house. And it's, and you know, he's smart as a whip and he just, he just continues to push on. So, I mean, oh. I'll tell you what, it is very easy. I, I saw you nod when I said about choosing. It's, mm -hmm. it can be very easy to, choose to sort of fall into a pattern um that is expected of you maybe you know yeah. like you're in this situation you're moving into a retirement facility maybe you just hang out at home you know but he's choosing to not do that he's choosing to continue to go out in the world and still you know wreak havoc and <laughs> and inspire his his granddaughter that's half his age oh my gosh <laughs> That is, so, that is so amazing. Two things. One, please t tell your grandfather, thank you for his service. Um, absolutely incredible to, to serve in the military and serve yeah. in the Korean War, especially. Absolutely amazing. And what really kind of resonates with me is your grandfather is an example of, so I've, I've, read, I've, I've read or I've heard of this Harvard study where they have talked about quality of life. And they've done this survey for multiple generations and they found those with a, a, the longevity and the best quality of life are the ones that have relationships, that continue mm -hmm. relationships along the journey, whether it's family, family choice, friends, but that, like you said, they choose to do these things. And once they make that choice, they have a higher quality of life and they have a higher longevity in their life. And your grandfather is a living example of that. And I see why he inspires you because he sounds like yeah. an incredible man. And need I need to connect with you to get him as a guest on the show as well someday. <laughs> that would be amazing. I don't know if you can figure out the Zoom, but we can, hey. we can try to help. We can try to help. Hey, if you're in Ohio next time in Ohio, we'll schedule that. We'll work yeah, that out on go. the side. But, oh but you gosh. know, you, I really... Yeah. I, I, I really do see how he would be a an inspiration to you. So yeah. just just amazing uh, yeah. to have that in your life, and 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 for one that you have that awareness to say, hey, you know what? I've got this example in my life, and I'm aware of what he is, who he is, what he's doing, and the choices he's making, and that's just inspiring. Yeah. I love yeah. that. It is, and and my 11 year old daughter, you know, we have we don't get back home to Ohio as often as we'd like. So for her to just be immersed in that environment, you know, she was also inspired, right? Like she's, you know, choices that she makes from here on out may be reflected from, you know, be a reflection of this, of those opportunities that we had to just sit around, have a beer with my grandpa. But she didn't have a beer, just clarify. Oh well, yeah, no, I get it, I get it. I She'll choose, she might choose that later. <laughs> I love that, 21, she can do that. So, so Stephanie, so the second thing you shared with me, you had some yeah. really great points in here and I, I truly like these things. So the second point that inspires you is your friends, but not just like, just not just your friends, but the friends that are starting their entrepreneur journey. Yeah. I have a hard time saying that, but you're, you, you've got friends that are doing things and that, that is, that's inspiring you. So unpack that a little bit and tell us how that inspires you. Yeah, so I did. I mentioned that I have quite a few friends that are um, on this entrepreneurial 
it is a hard word to say. You did well, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I practiced a little bit, <laughs> but they they are they they are putting it all out there, right? They are transparent with their journey. They are uh, authentic in who they are, and they are delivering something that is right for them. Mm -hmm. Like they're not trying to do something that doesn't fit with who they are or like what their passions are. And it's been amazing to watch because I think as we age, <laughs> my, my grandpa, you know, you know, he could talk about this, but as we age, again, we make some choices and sometimes we're, we just choose to sort of go along with what is happening to us in our environment, right? Like we talked about, yep. or we're choosing to do the things that bring us joy and, and make us feel inspired um, and passionate about, you know, what we're putting out there in the world. And I've just been seeing some really, really cool. Um, I also in, entrepreneurial, um, outings. I also will call it edupreneurship for my friends that are starting, you know, speaking and training companies as well. So kind of like savvy leasing and mm -hmm. savvy leading soon to be, um, it is, I call it edupreneurship and we do edutainment. <laughs> oh, I love that. You know, we just make up words. Hey, and that's, you know, you're coining new phrases. That's, that is like, that's just inspiration in of itself where you're, you're creating something that wasn't there before, but you're through your inspiration, you find your purpose. You're able to create something new that adds value, not only to yourself, but to the people that encounter that value add. And, and Stephanie, I, <clears throat> I love how you go back to choices. Yeah. And I, and I love, this is kind of a reoccurring theme and, and it resonates deeply with me because I, we all have choices to make. And, and I, and I agree that a lot of times we can just kind of go by default and just kind of follow some path that is given to us or provided for us, or we can make a choice to find our purpose. And then, then that creates the authenticity and then, and then the, the energy and the excitement to do something new. Uh, edutainment, edu learning, <laughs> however you want to call it. I, that's, yes. That is that truly is inspiring, Stephanie. I'm excited to. I'm I'm really excited to see where you're going to take your new savvy uh, leadership, um, and and I'm going to be a fan of it. I'm going to follow you, and I can't wait to be uh, celebrate your successes with that. Thank um, you. And so, Stephanie, this is I'm excited about this last point. This is really unique, and you don't hear about this very often. But you're taking a special kind of class. Mm -hmm. And I want you to share with us what kind of class you're taking with with some some other people. Yes. What is what is this and why would you take this kind of class? Well, yes, and I'm taking an improv class <laughs> and it has been unbelievably inspiring. I said earlier, give me a microphone, put me on stage. I'm all for it. Right, it is natural for me. Even so, even though some people have said, "Oh, Stephanie, that's so brave of you," I'm like, "No, it's not." Like, this is I love this stuff. Like, this is right up my alley. I, in, with intention, took this class though. I've always wanted to do it, and I've never done it, it because I was choosing to keep with our theme to be more present. Mm -hmm. I struggle a little with you know thinking too far ahead, maybe too far behind thinking of thinking, you know, outside of, of the, uh, the current moment. And so I said, you know what? I want to be more present. I want to improve my stage presence. I want to have fun and I wanted to meet new people. I, you know, again, we choose our people and I spend a lot of time and, and I love my multifamily people. I do, but I also spend a lot of time with my family and I, thought, I was like, you know, I really want to like kind of branch outside and they have been, I'm getting chills again because they have been such an incredible group hmm. of people to be on this journey with. Um, I really am getting chills. Like I might, this might, this one, <laughs> I, I, I made it through the grandpa talk. Right. I don't know if I make it through the improv class talk. It's, it's all the emotions. It is. It's, it's, you know, nine people in this class. So it's a smaller class. So we get a lot of stage time. We do classes and then we had a, a showcase and we all liked working together so much. 
that we begged the school or the, uh, the theater to do a level two improv class so we could all stay together. So we actually got them to do a level two. So we're doing it all again. We're starting back up again in November because we wanted to stay together. There are two cardiologists in this class, a psychologist, two stay at home moms, a yoga instructor, a pizza delivery guy, a water treatment plant engineer, and me. And it's like, this is an amazing group of people and it works. And I, they inspire me because there's only one or two of the others who do any sort of stage work. One's a, the, one of the stay-at-home moms is also a singer. Mm. Amazing singer, by the way. I always try to sing with her on stage because then I, everybody gets to hear her. And there was, and the yoga instructor, he also does, um, you know, like speaking engagements and things like that. So other than that, none of the others ever have been on stage, ever. Like this was so outside their comfort zone, but to see them be present, have fun, yes and all the way <laughs> every day, it was, it's, it's been, it has been, it has been life-changing, honestly. Like I feel so inspired by what they are willing to do and what they are willing to put themselves out there. Kind of like my friends that are entrepreneurs, like they're doing something the entrepreneurs are doing something that feels right to them. Uh -huh. My improv class folks are, are doing something that maybe didn't feel right to them, but felt right now. Like it felt right right now. And um, they are they are truly, um, my ha it's my happy place on Mondays now. So when we start back up, I'm excited. And <laughs> uh, I just keep thinking about like, you know, people, people that, are willing to do that. Those are the those are the kind of people that if I'm hanging around them, I'm probably gonna be hanging around them when I'm 90. That's awesome. Just, that's and fun. that's that and that's that relationship like your grandfather's yep. doing, you know, you're building yep. these relationships and it's 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 creating a better quality of life for you. Cause I can yep. I can just feel your energy and excitement when you're talking about not only your grandfather, but your friends doing the entrepreneur journey, but your friends with the improv, you're creating a life of, of quality relationships and, and it's, and it's so neat and it's creating it. It's just creating energy for you. And, and I yeah. love seeing that and I can feel that in the way you talk about it. Yeah. And one of the other things, Stephanie, which I believe is truly unique is what you're doing is you're in the multifamily industry mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure you have, you know, learned you know, thousands of things in the multifamily industry. And here you are break, breaking rank, learning something different outside of the multifamily industry. However, all of those skills you're learning are going to be able to apply to the multifamily industry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the insights that I'm gaining, I, I take a lesson, a literal lesson from every time we are building on each other in the class, our teamwork, our trust, all of that has been extremely valuable oh, and being present in the moment being exactly being present in the moment i was going to say you're never too old to learn something new it's true <laughs> ask my <That> grandpa is... <laughs> <laughs> that's so true <laughs> stephanie it has been it has been such a pleasure to to chat with you to learn a little bit more about you and just been excited about connecting with you we're at the end of our time okay. and before we wrap up i'd love to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us Oh, sure. So Gary, thank you. First of all, thank you so much. You are super fantastic. Always have been. I love whenever we get a chance to connect and, and collaborate. Um, I'll leave my final thought kind of going back to my original thought about we're more than one thing, right? So when we're talking to people and we are building these relationships, you know, you asking what inspires me, that's one of my favorite questions, right? Like I said before, I also like asking, I mentioned, you know, what are you proud of? Sometimes those are the same thing. Sometimes they're not. And, and I think that it helps you get to know people a little bit better and choose to, you know, kind of be in a deeper connection with people. We are not just what we do, you know, who we are is a lot more multifaceted than that. And I, so I just like to leave the audience with thinking about that as they go out there and uh, yes, and their way through life. <laughs> I love that. I love you bringing in the improv skills. You're bringing in the choices. You're more than just one thing. I truly believe that's so good. Stephanie, everything you've shared today has just resonated deeply with me. And it's it's been so great to connect with you. Guys, make sure you connect with Stephanie. She's on LinkedIn. Uh, she's got 
absolutely incredible content on there. So I promise you, just, just connect with her. Make sure you keep an eye out for Savvy Leaders. I think that's going to be... Yeah. <laughs> that, that is going to be a game changer. I'm, I'm telling you right here, right now, Stephanie A-List Ayler is going to create something absolutely incredible. Guys, make sure you follow her. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. And we will see you on the next episode. Thank you.